There are seven things that you should be doing with your Mini 4 Pro as soon as you get it. Now, these things are gonna make your flying easier, safer, and actually allow you to access all of the new features of this drone, because without doing one of these things, you actually can't access one of the new features. So grab your drone, fire it up, and let's get the most out of your brand new DJI Mini 4 Pro. The first thing I recommend you do is something you should actually do when you buy your drone. Oh my God, the flies. And it is you should purchase DJI Care Refresh. Care Refresh is basically like DJI's own insurance policy. So if you have an accident with the drone or it flies away, you are covered. You'll just pay a small excess fee and they'll either send you out a new drone or they'll repair your current one. DJI Care Refresh is just good for peace of mind. Even though this has full 360 degree obstacle avoidance, you know, accidents happen. If for the next one, we're gonna get this thing up in the air and I'm gonna do a bit of a demo to show you how one of these features works. I'm gonna have to put my fly net on as well. This is ridiculous. So let's get it powered up, get it in the sky and let's show you number two. <laughs> Okay, so now we're in the sky. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit those three dots in the top right hand corner, which is gonna bring us to this safety screen. Now from the factory, it comes set for the obstacle avoidance action to be braked. So basically when the drone sees an object like me, it's gonna try, it's gonna fly towards me and then it's just going to stop. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just gonna stop in front of the object. What you really wanna do is set this from brake to bypass. So instead when the drone comes to an object, it will find a safe route around it, just like that. And it will continue on its path. What that's basically gonna do is, especially if you're in tracking modes and things, it's just gonna keep the drone moving. It's gonna make it much easier for it to catch back up to you, lock back onto the target or subject, and it's gonna give you a much more seamless flying experience. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna go back into the same menu, but we're gonna click onto control now, and we're gonna select subject scanning. Now, what this basically does, we're gonna turn that on, and I'm gonna show you how this works. So if I turn the drone around now to find me, so when it sees me on the screen, we've got a little plus that we can just click on and it selects me as a person. Now, if subject scanning was turned off, it's not gonna give me the option to just select me. I would have to draw a box around myself and then it's gonna pick me up as a subject. So to save you a bit of time and to make things a bit easier, if you put subject scanning on, it just picks me up straight away and it makes that much easier. Next up, we're gonna enable one of the features of the new Mini 4 Pro that you can't actually access from the factory unless you do this specific thing. So what you need to do is you need to click on the three dots in the corner. Then we're gonna go onto control and then we're gonna scroll down till we get to button customization. Click on that and these are the default settings. So what we want to do is we wanna change this one here, which is the C2 button. And instead of it being from rotate from portrait to landscape, we're gonna change this to control and then we're gonna click cruise control. What that basically is gonna do is gonna allow us to access the cruise control feature on the Mini 4 Pro. So if I now come out of that menu, to use the cruise control, all I have to do is say I just wanna travel in a straight line. I just push forward on the sticks and whilst I'm holding the stick forward, I just press the cruise control button. I can then let go of the stick and the aircraft will continue to fly forwards. Now to cancel cruise control, you can either press the button on the screen or if you just tap the button on the back once, cruise control will stop. And then you can just fly the drone again manually. Now cruise control is actually a really powerful tool because you can lock the sticks in whatever orientation they are. So you can get a really complicated flight maneuver going on and then just hit the cruise control button and the drone will continue to fly in that pattern. So if I show you this here, we're gonna fly forwards to the right, then we're gonna yaw to the left and then also decrease in altitude. And then I'm gonna hit the cruise control button now the drone is gonna to continue to fly this pattern until I cancel it either from the screen or just by tapping the button on the back and then it stops. So you can get a really complicated flying maneuver going on and then just hit cruise control, let the drone complete the maneuver and then it's all good. So moving on to the next one. So the next thing that I suggest you do is you should get comfortable using the pro mode on the camera options. What that means, you've got the bottom right here. If you click the auto, it's gonna to change to pro. What that's gonna do is give you full control over all the different camera settings on the drone. And what you wanna do here, get familiar with everything. You can see here, you can change your frame rate, your resolution. You can also change where the footage is being stored to and then your color profile as well. Have a play with all of these things. And then also you wanna look at things like your white balance. Now, when the white balance uh, is set to auto, you can actually get some really funny changes of color when you're going from like a darker to a lighter environment and it's really not advisable or very 
cinematic. So what I tend to do is I always fly in manual white balance and I tend to go for something around 5500 Kelvin or I change it depending on what the scene looks like. But 5500 or 5000 to 5500 is a pretty good ballpark to be starting in. So after that, you can also look at your ISO and your shutter speed. Now the ISO is basically the higher your ISO, the more noisy your image is gonna be. So it's gonna be like grainy and things. So you wanna keep the ISO value as low as you can. So ISO 100 is always preferable. And then when it comes to shutter speed, you wanna have your shutter speed as twice your frame rate. So if you're shooting in 30 frames a second, your shutter speed should be one over 160. So if I show you what that looks like here, if we go to one over 160, what we can see here, everything is now way overexposed. So what you do in this situation, you would get an ND filter, which is basically like sunglasses for the camera, stick that on the front, and that's gonna bring the exposure right down to a point that looks correct. So currently ND filters for the Mini 4 Pro seem to be out of stock everywhere. So even I'm having to wait for that, but that's how the uh, automatic camera settings work and how they're gonna benefit you when flying your Mini 4 Pro. The next thing that you need to do is you need to go back into that menu at the top and then on safety, you wanna scroll down a little bit until you see advanced return to home. Now you've either got preset or you have optimal. And I recommend that you change this to optimal. What this means is the drone is gonna calculate what it thinks is the best possible return to home route. It's just gonna give you a smoother return to home experience. And instead of the drone just having to ascend to crazy altitudes all the time to get back, it can make more of those choices itself, judging on the environment around it. So we're just gonna tell the drone to return to home and we're gonna see what happens. Return to home. New to the Mini 4 Pro as well, we can see we have this cool sort of AI generated channel which shows you where the drone is going to go to return to home. So it's going to make its way back here. I'm not going to make you wait through all that. I'm going to tell you about the last thing that you need to do when getting your Mini 4 Pro. And the last thing that you need to do is you actually need to go and check out this video here where I give you the absolute best control settings to change sort of the rates on your Mini 4 Pro, which is going to give you the absolute best cinematic footage in both cine, normal, and sport modes. That video is gonna be linked just here. Go and check it out, full of information. Thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you enjoy your Mini 4 Pro, and I'll see you in the next video in just a few seconds.